What's going on guys? It's your boy, future nurse Wes Simmons, and this is the Nurse Network. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys five things that you can do so you can be successful in anatomy and physiology. So stay tuned. So before we get into today's video, I just want to remind you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos all the time, giving out education and motivation about all things when it comes to nursing. Also, don't forget to hit those links below. That way you can contact me if you have any questions. So I'm back. I got my note card. I got it written down. Like I said, y'all know I want to be nice and precise. Also, this is a these th ah. <laughs> These are the things that I did, y'all. These are literally the things that I did. And I wanna give them to you because I struggled in the class. Y'all know where I come from with the class and get into nursing. So I wanna give y'all some education and motivation on this topic. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now this very first thing, and mind you, this list is in no order, but this very first thing is more important than everything I'm about to say. This is something my mom told me to do. And I didn't take it seriously at first, but once I messed up in the class and had to redo it and started struggling with things, I listened to this piece of advice she gave me and it truly did work. Introduce yourself to the professor and tell them that you're excited to be there. This sets you up for an enormous amount of success in the class. When you tell the professor that you're excited to be there, the first thing you've done is you've broken the barrier between you and the professor. You've now put yourself in position to be able to ask this professor for anything you need. This professor now looks at you as someone who cares in this class. And because of that, they're now going to fulfill their obligation to you to make sure that you're successful. When you don't do this, they still have that obligation, but nothing makes you special. You're gonna have questions throughout this class. And the way this list goes, you're gonna see how it builds on it. But when you introduce yourself to the professor, I'm telling you, you set yourself up for success. And you also have to now keep your word. You now have told this professor that you're excited to be there. So now you have to act like it. You gotta show up to class. You gotta be on time. You can't have missing assignments. You now have set yourself up for a higher expectation that you might have even thought. And this is a very good thing because you're gonna need motivation to get through such a tough class. So starting by introducing yourself to the professor is a great way to ensure your success in this class. All right, so the next thing on the list is to review every test with your professor that you just told how excited you are to be here. This is so good, right? Because now you're looking at your test and you're able to see, you know, the things that you got wrong and you got right, but more importantly, you can now understand why. And the reason it was so important for you to introduce yourself to the professor is because when you go to review that test, you don't have a barrier of entry. These tests come upon you fast. So you need to feel comfortable with going to your professor to go ahead and get this test reviewed in their office hours. It's out the way, you know I'm excited to be here. You know I wanna be here. Okay, so once you ask for that meeting, they're gonna be on it and you're gonna have first dibs at that test review, meaning you're gonna have more time to review for the next test than all the other students. What a great way to get ahead. This is something that I did and I highly advise you do the same thing. So quick recap, right? The first two things I told you to do is to introduce yourself to the professor. And the second thing I said is to review every test. So here's number three on the list. I want you to record every lecture. We live in the day and age where we all have a great, nice $500,000 smartphone or however much this thing costs, right? We have these nice, good smartphones. You don't need to be on your phone in class anyway. So go ahead and let that thing go to work for you by putting it up in the front of the classroom and you recording every word that that professor says. By recording these lectures, you're now gonna be able to push yourself in lab or in class, my fault, whenever you want. Now, when you leave class on your way home, you can listen to the lecture. Before you fall asleep, you can listen to the lecture. Maybe on your break at work. These are all things that I did. By being able to have that lecture on demand, word for word, when it came time for me to take the test, I knew it forward and backward because I had listened to it all the time. 
You don't have to go as crazy as I did, but I would literally, I didn't do one of those things. I did all of those things. That thing was playing all the time, but it was very important that I did that because it led to my success. Another thing that reviewing the lecture does, my fault, recording the lecture does, is it helps you when you go to review those tests. A lot of times, these questions that we get, we all feel like, that wasn't, you didn't even talk about that, or you said it would be this and now it's that. Well, guess what? You've recorded your proof, and I can't tell you how many points I got back over the time of me being an AMP because they said one thing, asked it another way, they had no choice. I had proof, and they gave me those points back. So we've introduced ourselves to the professor, we review every test, we record every lecture. The next thing I'm about to say is a little bit kind of hard for me to put into words. It's one of those things that it just works and it's going to open lab. Go to open lab. I understand that for a lot of you students that the uh, the lab is separate from the lecture and that you know it only counts for maybe 30% of the overall class. I can't stress you enough how important this is. For some reason, there is a correlation from understanding the lab to a higher level that makes the lecture test so much easier. I can't explain it. I don't 100% know why that is the case, but please believe me. Please, please, please believe me. Go to Open Lab and you will see a better result on your test, I guarantee it. This last thing I did is something that's a little bit, you know, more time consuming, but I found a way to actually get it done in a more efficient manner, and that's to have practice questions. When I was in class, what I would actually do is I actually made my own practice questions. What I did was I wrote a question, or matter of fact, I did three questions for every slide. I created three questions that I thought might be asked, and I did that for every slide. And I literally probably had 200 questions after every single, you know, chapter. And so when I went into that test, I had written up, you know, an enormous amount of questions. I honestly couldn't tell you how many, but I created my own practice questions. What I now know is that those practice questions are already online. So go ahead and find you a, a, a good database that provides great practice questions and do these practice questions because the best way to actually be able to do good on a test is doing a test. You can't look at information and study all the time and think that that's gonna be the way you're gonna be successful. You have to do these practice questions. You have to test yourself before the test. So let's do a quick recap. I want you guys to make sure you got this. One, introduce yourself to the professor. Two, review every test with the professor. Three, record every lecture. Four, attend open lab. And five, either create or find some online practice questions. Guys, these are all things that I did. I didn't do them the first time around and I did not do well in the class. I did these things and I did well. Until next time, this is the Nurse Network and you are amazing.